Yo, what's going on? Good morning. We are connected to the High on Life podcast. Number, what, six, seven? I don't seven? know. I think it's seven. Uh, my name is Josh, and we have Matt Dennison in the building. We have Justice right over there, and we have Parker over there. What's going on? How are you guys doing? All of us are well. Thank you for speaking. <laughs> Thank you for speaking for me. That's true. It's efficient answer. Matt, you're good? I'm very well. Thank you're you. You're very well. Okay. I'm very, good. very well. All right. Awesome. Well, uh, well, thank you for joining us on today's podcast. We are here to talk about all things travel, all things creative, all things... Mountain biking. Mountain biking for today. <laughs> Apparently, this guy's the uh, mountain biking expert of YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say that? Uh, the mountain biking expert? Yeah. Uh, no, I wouldn't call myself that. No. No? Humble. No. I'm glad you don't call yourself that. No. <laughs> You're not that guy. You're not that guy. That was a trap. And you did not get it <laughs> We can follow us on Anchor. We can follow us on Spotify. Um, and wherever all good podcasts are put up. Uh, we want to thank Ben for, you know, painstakingly running the show back there. Thank you, Ben. Love Thanks, you, ben. ben. Parker, thank him, please. Thank you, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> we want to thank Top Mass for running the cameras. We got and Matt 2.0 wildly yeah, panning the right. camera. Killing I it. want to say hello to Andre and Vlad back there as our studio audience. The Chill. best audience right, you could have. Going on? So yeah, um, let's get just jump right into it. Matt Dennison, you are the owner and sole creative uh, person behind the YouTube channel called IFHT. What does that stand for? Uh, it stands for I bleeping hate that. Okay. That's IBHT. <laughs> Can we I say fucking? I don't know. Well, you just <laughs> leave that. Yeah, yeah. I think you get the idea, but yeah. yeah it okay. For, uh, how did that even, that, how did that name even come about? Um, well, we, <laughs> we, we just kind of made it by accident. Not by accident. We were just making videos in grade 12. It's going on like a decade now. Um, wow. When we were in high school, um, we loved to make mountain bike videos. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, it was like mid-December. It was about, yeah, it was. It was about this time, like nine years ago. Wow. And just gave away your age here. <laughs> and uh, it was it was way too rainy and nasty to make bike videos. So, and I had this high definition camcorder from a friend, and we're like, "Hey, why don't we make a funny video?" I was talking to Jason, my friend Jason, mm -hmm. over MSN Messenger. Wow. <laughs> of course. And uh, yeah, we were just bored, and we we're like, "Let's make uh, let's make some videos." And mm -hmm. we decided to make a little series about things that we hate in daily life. And uh, yeah, we made a bunch of videos about things that we hated, and we called it <laughs> that. We called it that. <laughs> That's a great theme already. I love that. Yeah. And, and yeah, it was fun, and we got some lols, and then <laughs> things started to pick up. And at one point, someone said, "Are you going to try to?" sign up for YouTube partnership. And I said, what's that? And they said, you can make money on YouTube. And I was like, what? And uh, I remembered that vividly in class. Someone asked me that and I was like, whoa, mind blown. And then we, so we made a YouTube channel. We were actually originally putting our videos on Facebook. It was just Facebook videos. And then, um, yeah, and then we started making more videos. We had some viral hits and things started picking up. We started going on news. We were getting in the newspaper and nobody could say our name. We couldn't say our name. And here I am, I still don't prefer not to say my name. The full oh, name. Wow. So we just shortened to IFHD and it's, here we are. I who, guess learned, a, who learned how to edit? Um, who learned how to edit? And how and why? Were you taking stuff in high school for that? Or like you just taught yourself? Uh, I, I, I was always into computers and downloading uh, <laughs> programs. You pirate. 100% legally. Um, <laughs> Downlo for the you downloaded You downloaded LimeWire Pro and LimeWire. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> exactly. uh, and... I don't know, just taking the footage and then figuring out what you could do with it and like playing with all the effects. Yeah. And then also just inspired by other people's videos. Like, how did they do that? And then YouTube tutorials weren't really a thing. No, not no. back then. So not you couldn't all. just find out like how to do this crop thing and then find out. I would like DM people, like DM filmmakers. And like, how did you do that? And then get no response. And then mm. figure it out myself two years later. Nice. Right. Yeah. What, what did you use? Windows Movie Maker or Premiere right away? Um, right away, well, my first like video on a computer ever was a Lego stop motion video. And I used some like trial, like the video had a trial <laughs> watermark in it. Uh, that, yeah, that was a great video. Um, and, uh, and then I, and I, I like once I actually started getting into it, I started using Sony Vegas Oh. and then Final Cut Pro. And now I'm with Adobe Premiere. Interesting. Awesome. Josh, mm -hmm. you just went from Premiere 
over to Final Cut Pro. Final yeah, Cut. that's right. Yeah, I'm a new convert, and um, you tried you tried to 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 get me to switch to the dark side. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's not going to work that easy. So <laughs> Final Cut's the dark side, then, hey? It is. It's like uh, you know we're like sewer rats, like trying to convince people to join our sewer. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good way to put it. Actually. I got my own sewer. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> the grass is always greener. For sure. Um, so you're. How, how old were you like when you started this? Like grade 12? Well, how old are people in grade 12 here? Like 16. 16, 17? No, it, 17, 17. 17. Yeah. Okay. I was born yeah. late. You're, yeah. I, I, I think 17. Um, mm-hmm. But, it, you know, it was just for fun. It was for fun for a long time. Yeah. I only started making videos on YouTube. Like, being, yeah. cons- I guess, considering myself a YouTuber full time three years ago? Three years ago, three really? Years ago? Wow. Like four years ago, maybe? That's when it hit know. you. You were like, okay, now it's the time to, you know, be a full time YouTuber or, you know, YouTuber. And yeah, it was just like the opportunities were now better than the job that I was at making videos. Um, and it was just kind of like, well, I should probably focus on that. And it was just fun. Yeah. 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 So, like, when you were, um, you know, starting out, like, what kind of s- stuff would you do so that you could do your YouTube stuff? Uh, like what job, what job yeah, did like, I have? Yeah. Uh, well, actually I was really fortunate to have, a, um, be offered a job with NSMB.com, North Shore Mountain Biking, uh, making mountain bike videos. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was like right at, pretty much right out of, I did a short film program out of high school. It was like four months long at Langara. Was it worth it? Was it worth it? Um, I mean, <laughs> it wasn't that expensive. Uh, I definitely have learned some things that I still take with me to this day. Um, mm-hmm. Some, uh, like, learned some great things in the director classes or in the blocking classes, How lighting properly, classes. Properly use gaff tape. Uh, yeah. yeah. Exactly, number one. Yeah, yeah. I'm fiddling it with, with it, my, my feet. <laughs> To people that are trying to learn more about <laughs> I always have it with me. <laughs> to people that are trying to learn more about filmmaking, would you suggest that they go to a film school or can you just learn everything online right now? Ooh, good well, question. Um I I've answered this question before and I, I think <laughs> next. And like I think I it, like in this in the video, I made a video and I said like don't go to film school just because I had gotten to, I've gotten to this point on yeah. my own without much education and like mm-hmm. and now I've figured out like I've started a business and figured out how to run a business on my own with no formal education and um but it kind of depends what route you want to take because and also what school you want to go to mm-hmm. like a school like that I went to there's not a lot of gear there's not even a lot of people like I had like four people in my specific class I think right. in like drama I took a drama filmmaking course right and the other uh, half of that course was documentary cool. um but yeah I mean there's some great film schools out there where you get access to amazing gear and great teams and you meet a very influential people who can, you know, who knows where those people will take you. Yeah, it's it's hard to say. Yeah. But um I just believe that whatever route you want to take, you can make it. I think it yeah. really depends on your style of learning. Like if you're somebody who's really self-motivated and you're like, you know what, I'm just gonna look up stuff on Google. I'm gonna keep reading for however many hours until I figure this out and I'm gonna get it done and I'm gonna look up things on YouTube and different videos and whatever and I'm gonna make sure that I know how to do it. I'm doing it on my own, boom, great. But for all of those who kind of need some structure that will be like, yeah, I'll start doing this, but I know I'm gonna get stuck on League of Legends in an hour and I'm gonna get bored <laughs> of what I'm doing and I'm gonna start doing something else completely. Like having that classroom where there's a teacher and you can't really just like muck about, you don't have your own time limit. That works better for some people, I guess. So, but you can still go to school for four years and then, you know, pay attention, do well. And then once you leave, you plant League of Legends again. It's kind of like my philosophy is just keep making stuff, keep picking up the camera, keep pressing record and always get better, always better yourself, always try to make something better than the last thing. Yeah, you don't stop out. learning. That's the really key message. Really, Yeah, Justice, sure. yeah, you've been getting into the tutorial thing, right? I, I nerd out whenever I have any time to myself on YouTube tutorials on photography, filmmaking. I even signed up for like uh, tutorial classes for a couple of free months just to see what they're about and see what's out there because like I'm just absorbing information right now like yeah. a sponge. Like That's all I want to do is just get better at my craft. I've got some good equipment now. I've got good friends that can teach me stuff. I'm like, hey, not, not talking about you. <laughs> I'm um, and so like, why not? Why not? I feel like this creative surge inside me right now. So all I want to do is just YouTube, whatever's out there and just spend my time learning. 
Yeah, it's out there. There's a lot of tutorials. There's a lot of tutorials. Tutorials. And that's, yeah. And everybody and their dog has a, like a, like a Lightroom preset pack. Yeah. Or like, <laughs> that's you gotta kind of be careful. If you're a, if you're a sponge, you kind of yeah, be careful that, that what the, liquids you're getting around, you know? <laughs> definitely the thing is you gotta filter through the crap because there's so much like, bad information out there or not great information. So don't waste 30 minutes on a video of someone that doesn't even know what they're doing because anyone and their dog can make a video and I call mean, it a tutorial. Let's be honest. No one actually watches the full 30 minutes. You immediately skim to the part. I don't know. I, I, I boosted the 1.5 times speed and then you go rip right through it as long as ah, I can understand what they're oh. saying. What yeah. was the last tutorial you guys watched if you, you know, watched anything? Probably portrait photography and doing frequency separation on a face. Whoa. Probably some live streaming yeah. tutorials. Yeah. Something I'm learning about now. How okay. to speak on a podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about you, Parker? You do any tutorials recently? Uh, yeah. I just recently finished watching how to puppy train your chihuahua. Seriously? No, not seriously. Oh, <laughs> Again, I fell for this. You mean in terms of like filmmaking? And oh, whatever. Like, what, tutorial for anything. How to beat the hardest boss in my Smash Brothers game? No, I don't know. <laughs> I haven't really you could make that watching. tutorial. I don't know if that one exists yet. Yeah, it's too fair, early. Fair it's enough. trending. No, it, that's made. I think recently, wow. I've actually, the last kind of things I was looking at to learn more about photography was mostly just my the camera that I'm using, the mm-hmm. Sony RX10. Just seeing what kind of features it has and what I can do with it that I wouldn't know just by kind of like flicking around some yeah. buttons and looking at it. Like have somebody who actually knows the camera, who's worked with it, who's done a lot of different things teach me what it what it's capable of and what it's not good for and what it is good for right so i think that's probably just learning about the camera that i'm using was mostly what i've been doing lately cool that's so important actually last tutorial i watched was uh gordon ramsay's uh Mm. thanksgiving turkey (laughs) so i'm gonna try and make it for christmas so Uh, yeah i i guess i wouldn't i wouldn't have even thought of cooking (laughs) shows as a tutorial but Mm -hmm. i do watch a ton of cooking shows i love to I, i would love to one day make my own cooking series that involves biking and going out in the middle of nowhere. You like cooking? I love cooking. And I've actually talked to you saying that we should go ride bikes into the middle of nowhere and cook some, something really I'll check my calendar. It's free. Let's go. (laughs) I'll make a calendar. Sweet. Okay. So, um, your niche, if we had to, if we had to say niche is like, uh, making comedy videos and biking and like, you know, you, as, uh, you know, as, as a creator, I think like, that's a very interesting, you know, marriage of ideas and mm-hmm. you've managed to make it work. Were there any like, you know, times where you're like, oh, I don't know if biking fits in this channel or I don't know if comedy fits with this biking stuff. Like, oh, ha- for have sure. you ever like had these creative, like, I don't know if this works. Um, for sure. <laughs> like, yeah. like, well, we, we've always had a bit of a, like we have a couple channels and we've always kind of yeah. trying to figure out like what lives on what channel. Yeah. Um, but what we figured out early on was just that, that niches are what can make you successful on YouTube. Right. And um, it, how that all worked out was I was working with NSMB making uh, mountain bike videos throughout the year. But I also had this YouTube channel where we were making comedy videos and it was it was doing well. We had some viral hits and I just asked my boss, hey, do you want to try to make a uh, a comedy a mountain bike comedy video we can and we could throw it up on the channel and it'll do well and i'll put the company logo on it and uh yeah and we really were like the only ones doing it mm-hmm. for a long time and i mean there's not a lot of people doing it still and a lot of people come to us when when they have in the mountain bike world if someone has a funny concept and they want to they have it on paper but they want to turn it into a video it, a lot of people come to us a lot of people We'll take the funny idea that they don't know how to how to how to make bring reality to and bring to life. Yeah. And they they say, "Hey, Matt, <laughs> so here's my idea. Yeah. <laughs> here's my pitch." That's yeah. awesome that you've been able to you know make those two work. Yeah, well, it's I mean it's it's just taking my passions. I just mm-hmm. have always loved to crack jokes, and I love <laughs> comedy. I love uh, watching funny films um, and mountain biking, obviously something that I love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was just natural. But I mean, is this going to work? Like, you know, the original question is, is this going to work? Yeah. We're always doubting ourselves. I think at some point, like, hmm, is this, did this turn out the way that we expected or is this going to do as well as we thought? And we used to, we used to, our approach to videos used to be how, how, like, how do we make a viral video? Like what's going to do well? 
and think of it that way. Mm -hmm. We don't make, we wouldn't make a video unless like that's going to be that next hit. Like, for example, like how to be a Vancouverite was the first of our how to be series. And we made that because, you know, we knew that it was going to do really well because no one had done something like that about our city. And, um, but, but now we, it, YouTube is a different space. It's been a long time that we've been on the platform and just having that approach doesn't always work. And it seems like you kind of got to just put out as much as possible. So while we still want to have a focus on reaching as many people as possible and making the best content as possible, we just want to make more. So next year we're on a mission to make weekly videos, one video a week, which is something I've wanted to do for a long time, but it's been very, very daunting. So that's what you believe right now is going to take you guys to the next level is you like, you know, doing more. E- yeah. I mean, it could take us to the next level, but it's also just the personal goal of yeah. wanting to achieve that because I, I, and, and I mean, our fans, they are, you look at any video, go in the comments and it's like you yeah. people just roasting us for not posting and they right. go to this, like, there's a there's a IFHT fan meme chat uh, Instagram yeah and it's, there's like way too many memes about how we don't post enough content so I'm kind of listening to the <laughs> you audience guys have your own meme amazing yeah <laughs> we're, we're we're yeah we're we're just trying to make put ourselves out there more and make more content and it's a challenge right it's For sure. next year is the year of the uncomfortable so I. Man, uh, you but, go, Justice. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, I saw your Instagram story recently. And you're voting, but you know, people telling your audience about you're thinking about making weekly videos. And I saw that it wasn't all the way like <laughs> you, you asked them, do you think it's possible? Not everyone was saying it's possible. People were doubting yeah. you somewhat. How do you feel about that? Um, think the, you can do it? it Screw the uh, haters? Yeah. Well, I mean, you, it's, you could, obviously, you're going to have some doubt in your mind when you face a challenge like this, but, and you can be okay with the doubt just kind of being there. But if you just let it consume you, then you're going to, it's going to overcome you. Right. So uh, Mm -hmm. I know that it's there and I know, but the reason that people say that is because we just put so much time into our videos and it's become like, as my, as, as Jason put it to me recently, he said, we always want to put that cherry on top. Right. And I was like, yeah, that's true. But I think it's actually like, we want to put the cherry on top and then we step away from the project for a couple hours and we look at it again and we're like, hey, we could put another cherry here. <laughs> and then and then we watch it again and we're like, oh, there's a few more cherries. And then there's just so many cherries at the end of it. And it's like, okay, like we got to abandon this at some point. We got to put yeah. it out. So it's, it's, and projects get stale too. After a certain point, you just, after a while of, after you've worked on something for too long, it's just... Yeah, but here's the thing. You put so many cherries on top, you end up with 12 million, 12 million views on a video. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, there's there's some videos with no cherries on top and they still have 12 million, vi- right. 12 million views. Not to say that I want my quality to go down or anything, yeah. but it's, it's going to be an exercise in just stepping away from a project. And also, one thing that's kind of bottlenecked what we do is... Um, I, I do consider myself a perfectionist. Mm-hmm. Uh, I kind of always has, have been like that. I always just kind of go overboard with the details Mm -hmm. in any schoolwork, like art projects, not necessarily like writing, (laughs) but like, (laughs) I haven't used a pen in years. (laughs) Um, yeah, there was a bottleneck where I just, the project would come to me and I would have to put the final touches on it. And I would just like go nuts and you know, whether it's color correction, the sound effects, it's just, I just have edited. I've put so many hours into the editing programs that I just, I've gotten better and better and better. And I know how to do sound. I know how to do color correction. I know how to, I know how to make an entire project from nothing, like completely by myself that it's going to be an exercise in handing it off to my team, which next year is going to be Andrew and and, and my buddy Kaz and uh, just stepping away from it and Mm -hmm. and knowing that things are going to turn out well and, and managing the team. And yeah, it's a big lesson in becoming a leader and just being able to leave it, leave your team to do it. What's Ben's favorite saying? Perfection is the, Enemy of progress. Progress, mm, yeah. Is, it? is that yeah. the word? Oh, that yeah. resonated with me, though. That makes sense. Because, like, I get that. Like, I mean, I've heard a lot of, like, I listen to a lot of podcasts, too, and, like, audiobooks, and everyone says, like, entrepreneurs saying, you don't always have to do 100%. Leave it at 80, 70 sometimes. Because sometimes when you just get it out in the world, you get, you learn, you get feedback, and you actually put stuff out there. Instead of waiting so long, and you finally do it, and you go neurotically put out this 100% project, and it's just, like... We would have got the same response probably from seventy yeah. percent because your eighty percent might be a hundred percent to someone else. Exactly, and mm. the project that people think you know, the project that I spent 
three months tirelessly on that, um, you know, is the best work I've done yet. And the best response that I've received yet to me is still not a hundred percent. It's never going to be. 100%. Yeah. Well, with with creativity, you can't really finish anything. Really. You can always keep on adding cherries on top. Yeah. No so man. yeah, we're going to just kind of drop some of the cherries a little. A little. Yeah, it's going to be a fun exercise. Good challenge. Mm-hmm. You're the uncomfortable. You're the I look forward to seeing it. 2019. Let's get uncomfortable. Are we going to get uncomfortable next year? <laughs> yes. I'm going to yeah. wear less underwear. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I did have a question for you. Um, when you're, when you're uh, coming up with an idea, you pretty much are like, you know, I, I don't want to say one man band, but like you're, you, do you come up with an idea yourself and then see it all the way to the end? Um, I come up with a lot of the concepts, Mm -hmm. um, and I guess I have, I can often have a a vision of what the end product will look like and knowing that, you know, through the creative process, it won't always end up exactly how you envisioned it. Mm -hmm. I will, I, I think it's just about communicating that idea, that concept. And then it's, yeah, I'm all about collaborating with friends and different people and having their ideas Mm -hmm. become a part of the project because Mm -hmm. you know I want it to be diverse and I might not there's things that I won't think about right of course so yeah it's just about sharing my ideas it's how to communicate those ideas from up here out there and actually have other people visualize it because I find that's the hardest thing to do is I have this amazing idea in my head but trying to explain it to everyone and convince them that it's a great idea I don't verbalize it right or I draw it out like I find that to be one of the difficult parts of like working on a team and trying to make like some creative video happen right at least for me I think that goes back to the bottleneck issue that I said where you know I might have a vision for an night for, for a video project and then I'll let someone else work on it but then it doesn't it's not the same as yeah. I envisioned so it's like well give me that back and I'll I'll do it my way and that's kind of what next year's about it's like it it is what it is. Let it become what it what it is. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. What are some of like some of the struggles that you experienced as like a, as a creator, um, um, in the past nine years of you know being in this uh, being in this industry? Yeah. Um, well, managing time is a oh. huge one, which um, I've come a long way with. Um, just I made I made a joke about making a calendar. I actually have like five calendars now in my room. <laughs> That's good. Uh, thanks. I saw that. On, uh, I think uh, it was on your story. Yeah, the other day. yeah, yeah. Um, thanks to my girlfriend Brooke, who has made me get my my shit together. And <laughs> set up a swear. That's okay. Everybody <laughs> um, gets yeah. one. Yeah. Um, that's that's a huge one for sure. Um, also, of course, like you know, any young millennial uh, on on Instagram, social media is just putting yourself out there and then seeing everybody else's life every day, um, and you know, comparing yourself to what other people are doing, which is it, it's always a struggle for I think a lot of us. Um, um, and I, I think a, a a big struggle too is the cohesiveness of my brand and what we're trying to do because th- that's actually a very big struggle. We, we've done so many different things over the years. We've done videos about volleyball. We've done videos about rock climbing, mountain biking, road biking, hockey. Yeah. Um, and they've all done very, very well. And we've had these groups of subscribers come to our channel and I think expect more of that right so we make like how to be a volleyball player and then we have you know 20,000 30,000 volleyball fans come and we're like this is great they make volleyball comedy and then we never make a volleyball video <laughs> yeah, yeah. ever again right <laughs> well and so we we, oh, we we have this like kind of like fire hose approach where it's just like everything and that was simply because there's different things that I just thought were interesting or I was passionate about or just different opportunities that came our way and I was like yeah, that's going to be funny. That's really what it came down to. It was just like, yeah, that would be fun. Let's do it. And it's mm-hmm. not like, oh, well, it doesn't really fit the brand. Well, maybe we shouldn't do that. Mm-hmm. And, and now it's just a, a, the struggle is having to take some of these ideas to the grave with you. It's like, you can't do it all. You can't do it all. And it's like, well, I know that I have a lot of awesome ideas. And even the fans are suggesting amazing ideas that I'd love to do. I'd love to just do them all. I just think about it. Oh, and it's on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. But unfortunately, it yeah, doesn't I guess work that way. You gotta, I guess you got to focus on what your identity is, right? Because if yeah. you're over here and you 
people, volleyball players, different, you know, Vancouver videos. Now you're making mountain, mountain bike videos. It's like, what is this channel really all about? So I guess kind of honing in on that niche that you're talking about before, which is maybe mountain bike comedy or really deciding what that needs to be. I think we sometimes struggle with that too, just mm -hmm. trying to figure out like, yeah, we're a travel brand, but like we can do vlogs, we can do cinematics, we can do interviews with people storytelling. But like, you know, when people come to the page, do they like, do they come for a travel video? And if we do like a beautiful destinations video, are they going to leave? Are they interested in that kind of stuff? So yeah. we've even like just trying to figure out recently, like what is our like new direction or our identity. And that's something we were trying to figure out as well. Yeah. And, um, again, my girlfriend, Brooke, went to um, Emily Carr and, and took a lot of classes in branding. So she's, she's taught me a lot. So that, that's, don't go to school, just have your significant other go to school and you know, <laughs> learn everything from them. That's the best way that yeah. they pay for it. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, and also, as you know, um, as an editor, yeah. just spending pure hours in front of the, the screen and being indoors. It's like, yeah. yeah, you get to do all this fun stuff. We get to live the dream and go travel and ride bikes in cool places and meet great people and just get ourselves into ridiculous situations making comedy. But then you have to go and spend the next like two weeks or more, way more yeah. in a dark room. Editing. That's what I hate about the editing process is that time is elastic. Like you could be spending eight hours on something awesome or you could be spending like two, three days on it and... Yeah, that's 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 what I hate. Yeah, I guess a lot of people don't realize how much work goes in behind each video, each post, post, and everything. And it's just mm -hmm. like, yeah, you see the sunny side and having fun all the time. You guys live the best life. But like, no, we're like working our asses off back <laughs> yeah. here, doing different stuff, running a business, even other stuff that's not high in life that we're trying to do. And it's just like, man, like grinding is hard. It's tough, especially around this time. It's dark out, and you're like. I'd rather just be in a sunny place doing nothing on a beach. That's right. Well, that's why I picked up the, the vitamin D uh, tablets to help Popped me with a couple my... of those bad boys when I came in. Did you? Oh, yeah. You didn't ask me? Huh? You didn't ask me if you could have them? Uh, I assumed they were communal. <laughs> As, same with the tequila on the... I took a couple of swigs that night. And... Mezcal. <laughs> oh, Mezcal. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Do they cancel each other out? I feel like they enhance each other. No. They do, yeah. <laughs> Let's yeah. try it. Well, um, speaking of identity... Going into 2019, if you uh -oh. had to go in with like def definitive <laughs> pillars of what you and your channel stand for, like what are they going to be? <laughs> um, you know, you asked me if I if I'm like the what did you say like the expert on mountain biking? Not really. It's just like we just <laughs> love mountain biking and where it takes us. And yeah. and and I love I personally just love the community that it mm -hmm. brings. And you know, I go to like the dirt jump park five minutes down from the road and I, I just love the fact that everybody's just stoked and everybody's just happy and everybody's there to like learn and just get better yeah. and um yeah that's really why I do it and I share it mm -hmm. um because of the community um but also I love to be creative I'm just I that's my other favorite thing in the world be creative do things with my hands um whether it's editing now or <laughs> camera um so pillars i don't know it's creativity positivity um i think those are our two as well yeah i mean they're Stop pretty broad us. they're pretty broad um <laughs> you know honestly we are working on this and i would like to define some of those pillars more hey, clearly we're trying to do but, that next year too yeah i i think it, it's obviously it's a journey you're always trying to to figure it out um, yeah. And there's no like definitive answer. It's always going to be adapting and maturing and yeah. getting better as we get older. And we change and our views change. And as the YouTube community changes as well, you have to adapt. So like, yeah, yeah 2019 is we're going to have a bunch of different pillars and views, but a couple years down the road, that's probably going to mature into something else. I think yeah. that's just the nature yeah. of being creative. It's a shape-shifting monster that you can't hold down. That's a monster, <sighs> you're right. <laughs> and before it used to just be, let's make comedy and let's, make it as high quality as possible. So high quality, I mean like high production value. Like right. we're getting, we're not just shooting it all in like, you know, the living room and then just putting different costumes on. We're actually getting that location. <laughs> we're actually, that's how, yeah, it that's, all, that's how it all started though. It, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're like, you know, getting the location, getting actors, right. like we're going the whole nine yards to, to make a, and, a sketch on our, on our own. Well, I think that's one of the things that really like sets you apart is that your production value on like these comedy videos, they're like, 
so well planned and like very detailed and every shot is like okay that was meant to be there he's got a red it's unfair <laughs> <laughs> yeah um and that's very intentional we wanted to set ourselves apart that way because we don't want to just be classified as youtubers because it's a bit of a like right. it's a you know it's, got a it's still a dirty word it's a yeah. bit of a dirty word right we want whether it's like filmmakers or directors or Influencer. cinematographers oh, influencers, influencers, <laughs> influencers yeah. is a dirty word right? it's a yeah. dirty word a lot of people yeah. don't like that word yeah mm -hmm. um we just wanted to hold ourselves to a higher standard um but but now one of the pillars is is our is our content educational or valuable? Is someone going to learn something, right? And of course, you guys are focusing on that too. Yeah. But that's just because we've reached a point where we're, we've been doing this for so long where we realize, hey, we could actually, there's a lot of people now who are watching us who ask us questions. How do, how do you do this? How do I become like this? And we want to, you know, inspire other people. Yeah, that's 100%. all about inspiring other people. That's like the most rewarding thing. That's literally carbon copy of what we were trying to do. You should check out our channel. I saw your notes in the, in the other room when I went to the bathroom. So <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what my pillars are. I don't even know what that means. Um, I got a question for you, actually. I was, I was watching your videos last night and you I can't remember which one it might have been Chilcotin or something. No, one of the, I think the Heli one. Anyways, um, just you had a lot of great shots of, you know, like intentful shots of you guys just riding by on the trails and stuff like that. And one, I was thinking, how is he carrying all this camera equipment in his back? And you're ripping too. So it's like, is this dangerous? Are you worried about crashing your bike and wrecking like five grand, eight grand worth of equipment? And two, like the flow of travel, we always struggle with when we're filming on the road, stopping, having to get someone walk by something twice or like get an organic shot. It's difficult. It must be even harder mountain biking. So you're moving so quickly and you have to get people to walk up hills is that, is that a lot of struggle with you filming that or does that piss people off when you're filming with them? <laughs> uh, yeah. it comes the truth <laughs> yes, it's a struggle and it pisses everybody off. Um, yeah, it can definitely be a huge struggle, but I was, um, doing this freelance. Um, like I was, I used to just follow other pro riders around and have all the gear on my back and just follow them and, you know, have to, ride for five minutes and take it all off and take the tripod out, put the lens on, yeah. do, do that. And then put it all away. And it's definitely a process that is really repetitive and takes a lot of time. And you have to, con you have to consider that in your plan for the day, right? Yeah. Whether you're, you're going to shoot for a certain amount of hours and you want to get sunset, whatever you have to consider, like, okay, you got to like take all the gear out and ride with it. Um, in terms of the danger, um, yeah, you could get pretty messed up if you crash. I haven't yet. Good. Um, I was going to ask that yeah, actually. I, so. I've never crashed with all the gear on my back. So what, what kind of gear are you carrying usually? Well, that's changed over the years. Um, sometimes we carry a uh, red and like cine lenses and oh. red batteries and, oh, wow. and a tripod and, oh, shit. and like, oh. you know, all the little accessories. Okay, like here we go. Like, everything. If, right? yeah, if the, if your bag was like, you know, how, how what's, what's the you know dollar value of all the <laughs> shit in there? <laughs> I I don't know. It's I mean, like five digits worth. Yeah. Was, yeah. Wow. Just right sitting on your back. People always, I thought you were going to ask me how much does it weigh? And people always ask me that. And I never know. Cause I don't want to know. I don't yeah. want to know. This isn't, I've never weighed my bag. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I used to just carry everything on my own. Um, but now I have more friends who help me and we split the load. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's and good. now the gear is becoming, um, you know, Lighter, people are making yeah. gear, catering it for, for, for light packing. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, it's a little bit easier, but it's not even just bringing the gear onto the trails. Um, it's bringing it to like wherever we're going. If we're traveling by car, we still have like Pelican cases full mm -hmm. of stuff. And then we have to transfer all that into bags, but yeah. it's just repetition and just getting used to your gear and just like finding convenient ways and also making sacrifices. Like you might not be able to bring all the lenses. You got to like plan your day. Like, Hey, I'm just going to focus on with like right. that, those two lenses. And yeah. I'd love to have a inspired drone, a huge drone with me and just make everything look crazy cinematic. But mm -hmm. I have to have a little tiny drone that yeah. is still amazing, but yeah, people, there's limitations. Well, going back to like how you like, you know, manage people or like, or, you know, getting to shoot them. Do people go like, we don't have time for this or like, I don't want to do this again or whatever. Uh, I think most of the people that we shoot with are quite patient with it. Like a lot yeah. of, a lot, if, if you filmed like a mountain bike video or an action sports video before, you know that there's a process you come to expect yeah. it, that there's setup time and tear down time. But, um, yeah, I've definitely, I definitely can, can think of some instances where people have been very impatient and that's actually, uh, 
<laughs> very anxiety inducing. Like when you, let alone you have this pressure of having to do a project and get the shots and you're trying to, you know, focus on the, the art and like mm -hmm. make everything look nice. You have this, this, this jackass who is like obviously very <laughs> uh, impatient and he's not into your workflow and he's yeah. used to the guy who just whips it out. No tripod. Boom. Got the shot. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, some people just have different workflows and some people just work better <laughs> I guess together. you have to be honest with everyone when you start. Like this is like filming comes first. Mountain biking is going to be part of this, but like you got to get the shots, right? I don't think I really even give that pep talk ever. No, <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. oh, I'd be shit. just go with the flow, really. <laughs> yeah, every, sure. every, every shoots. One of the things I remember when I first met you, this was like after the uh, you joined High on Life on the road trip in America in 2015. Yeah. And I yeah. remember you saying like, wow, the, uh, like they would always come up with an idea and they would just shoot it right away. And I would be the one saying, whoa, 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 whoa. How are we setting this up? What's the scene? Where am I going to put this camera? And then Rush would say, whatever, let's just shoot it. <laughs> whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely learned a lot from those guys just to like, you know, don't overthink it. And again, not only is 2019 year of the uncomfortable, it's year of don't overthink it. Yeah. I yeah. love to overthink stuff. Um, yeah. Um, they would definitely love to just uh, <laughs> jump on an idea and want to just do it. Run and quick. gun. Yeah, yeah. run and gun. Yeah. Yeah. The, the spirit of the moment, the energy of the moment, just capture it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That was a great road trip, though. Yeah. That was, that was. Chang Man joined you on that one as well, too. Yeah, yes. Right. Yeah. Our good friend Chang Man. Um, Parker, you were Parker? on that trip, right? Parker was I was there. there. Yeah. I know it. I remember it very well. Yeah, it was I good. I learned times. a lot about. Chang man on that trip. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I'm not going to go into it now. Tell us oh, wait, wait. No, no, tell us a story. I remember <laughs> someone saying that somebody on the trip, every time they pooed, they needed to have a shower right away. Is that it? <laughs> oh, yeah, I wasn't going to say it. Oh, sorry. Shh. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> wow, well, we're going to ask him that. I, I think I had... also went into the bathroom and I, <laughs> I, I, I saw... Everybody, like, what did you have see? Have you guys put toilet paper on a toilet seat before? Yeah. Yeah, I like... Foreign countries. Not in a hotel. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Not, not in a hotel. <laughs> have you have you put five layers of toilet paper nope. on a toilet seat? I thought no. I was a germaphobe, but uh, some people are just more protect protective of their tushy. <laughs> so. I guess it's okay to be safe, but that's... A little, much. Okay, a, little, <laughs> yeah. a little much. But other Anyways, than the, the, uh, the whole road trip was great. We should definitely focus on some of the other aspects of the road trip that we enjoyed. It was great. One Sorry, thing that Ryan. comes to mind is uh, who was who was trying to cook an egg when in the when the with in the RV when it was like when we're on the I highway. I believe I was doing most of the cooking while we were driving. You were cooking the egg. That was out of control. Um, the first stop of that road trip was um, indoor skydiving. Right. Mm -hmm. I fly Seattle. Yeah. That was harder than I expected. Yeah, it's pretty hard. Yeah. It's fun though. It you is. Get a hang of it. It is. Yeah. We should go back to uh to Vegas just outside, Nelson's Landing, to some of those cliff jumps oh, or whatever. Yeah. And that, that oh lake. yeah, I remember yeah. that. That video. was a really cool area. Yeah. Never seen anything like quite like that. Yeah. That that trip was great. Um, and I really wanted to join you guys on the on the next the Great American Road Trip that you guys did invite me, but I couldn't I couldn't make it. Unfortunately, the timing Best is off. Best road but. trip ever, ever. <laughs> yeah, you could have been a felon. It been fun. <laughs> but I, I really wish we could. Have. You guys invited me on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. And uh, I still haven't been to the East Coast of the of U.S. And uh, yeah, but uh, good times. Good footage, too. Yeah. Well, yeah. we're actually considering getting the RV back on the road again. Oh, really? Yeah. I, th I think hopefully by the summer, if the budget makes sense to do it, because it might be like 5 to 10K just to get it back on the road. Yeah. yeah. But like, I'm thinking, let's do it. We need to do a new sticker job on that, too. I, I got a vinyl cutter. It can cut 12-inch vinyl. Okay, let's Give do me it. Like I like baby 70 blue. days. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think yeah. Well. Bass is a little bigger than 12, but <laughs> probably could work. Yeah. yeah. What about travel? Like, um, how do, um, has travel, you know, are you doing any traveling lately? Um, or are you trying to incorporate it into your brand? I think you told me a couple of weeks ago that you're like, yeah, I want to do more traveling with this with this channel. Yeah, I think I think every every young millennial also <laughs> seeing what's on Instagram, everybody th thinks that they need to travel as much as possible. And <laughs> like, if you're not traveling, you're a, you're dying. You're a loser. That is kind of true, though. I mean, not not that's not true, but like that's what I see every time I open my phone is I'm in the beautiful yeah. place. I'm with a beautiful woman. I'm on a beach somewhere. It's just like whenever I come back home to Vancouver and it's gray, I'm like, I should be out there. It's yeah. Just instilled. Uh, after doing a lot of traveling this year, I, I recall speaking with with Brooke and saying that I was very happy to be at home and just 
uh, being able to have late night editing, mm -hmm, so late nights sure. editing and just like, just chill. Yeah. And then I was like two, two months into it, I was like getting a little stir crazy because, you know, winter in Vancouver is, yeah, you get a bit, uh, a bit uh, trapped, a big bit of cabin fever. Yeah, there we go. Yep. But uh, I have had uh, amazing opportunities to, to travel um, for work. I've done a lot of like commercial type work. Mm -hmm. um, and, but I, I, I don't, I don't travel as much just for personal pleasure as much as I'd like to. So that's a goal too. Where would to you want to go? Uh, I'm, I, I would like to go. There's so many places I want to go, man. Detroit. <laughs> Detroit is number one. Top of the list. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, no hate on Detroit though. I'd like to go to Dildo, Newfoundland. <laughs> you just wanted to say that, didn't you? No. That's okay. where I'm from. What? Yeah. I'm a Dildodian. Oh, man. Wait, 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 wait. You're from Newfoundland? <laughs> no, I'm not. Oh, well, you uh, had Richard, BC, okay. unfortunately. Uh, I would like to go to Italy uh, for some personal pleasure, uh, <laughs> eat some pasta, um, have some espressos, um, look at some, some things. That'd be great. Don't forget love gelato. Gelato. Things are great. Yeah. Um, like to go to Japan oh, yeah. uh, with my pal Kaz and go eat some sushi, look at some more things. Um, Pachinko and parlor. Austria. Gamble on. And what? Pachinko parlors. Yeah. Gambling. Pachinko. Oh, what is that? I don't actually, I couldn't really describe it. It's kind of like they're, they're all their gaming stuff. Do they like drop something down? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, I thought Plinko too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, like Bob Barker, yeah, yeah. but yeah. no, it's like, <laughs> I didn't know Bob Barker was Think of a Japanese <laughs> style of casino. Yeah. But then I don't really know the rules and, and what it's like, yeah. but they're big and they're everywhere. And it's like, I don't know. You, got to be an adult to go there and it's what the mm -hmm. adult gambling community seems to do for to, for fun the, the best of my knowledge uh -huh. yes yeah. you'll, you'll see it when you're there i uh i heard that J japan is one of the harder places to go to if you don't have someone who's from yeah japan. i would say like, probably I, I don't know why but um yeah so kaz if you're watching uh take me and Let's go play Plinko with Bob Barker. <laughs> that sounds, that's it. That's right. Yeah. Um, I'd also really like to go to Australia and New Zealand. I've, we have a lot of fans down there and they're just constantly asking us to go down there. And I, so I'm going to come down there soon. Mm -hmm. uh, Europe, I haven't really shown face to the fans in mm -hmm. Europe. I want to go to like Germany, UK, uh, Switzerland. Uh, um, <laughs> name every single country. Yeah. Like, <laughs> how many countries do you know? Would you be, yeah, yeah. would you be renting a bike while you're out there? Yeah, that would be great. Would you bring your bike? Ooh, uh, it's ideal if you bring your own. Um, but it's, um, yeah, I'd bring my, own. I'd bring my own. <laughs> uh, yeah. it, it gets expensive though. Of course. It's sure. very yeah. expensive. Yeah. But even just bringing like camera gear can be expensive too. It's just it's, traveling it's, alone is pretty expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Just stay at you home. know, traveling is the best when someone else pays for it. So true. Mm. That's, that's so uh, so brands. Just so you know, um, uh, he, <laughs> yeah. uh, Matt Dennison's here. Brands, looking, if you're watching, yeah, Bob Barker. Yeah, <laughs> I will machines. sell out. Yeah. immediately. Um, well, your work it looks very commercial, and not and not in a bad way. But when it, when we look at it, it's like wow, this looks like a commercial, and I think that's what's that's what's great about your work. It's like. Uh, this is ready for TV or uh, for the movies well, or something. Thank like you. That. Thank I you. Say that. I think our goal recently was to make things look more expensive than they really were. Mm. And then hopefully that'll, oh God, if the brand, brands are watching, I just expose myself. They're watching. <laughs> they're off they're sure always watching. They're actually worth exactly as much as you think. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, just making things look expensive and yeah, just you do a good job with that yeah. professional as hell even the comedy videos i appreciate that yeah. the production value yeah we're gonna try uh you know something similar we're we're probably gonna you know rip off one of your videos and try it try to you know manipulate it yeah. not manipulate yeah. like emulate it sorry yeah or, you off, just, or just join us on a video let's go make some yeah. stuff happen mm -hmm. that'd be a lot of fun that'd yeah. be a lot of fun i do recall our yeah. our bicycle ex uh experience in <laughs> the Nanaimo. Vancouver Island. Yeah. Was it Nanaimo? I don't know. I don't no, it wasn't. It was um, Bear Lake, Bear Lodge. Oh. And you oh, guys yeah. were shredding. Bear Mountain. Yeah. I thought somebody Bear was going to get hurt real bad. Oh, we did backflips. We, we backflips. Back you guys did, uh, yeah. yeah, we First were riding. Airbag with, experience. We yeah. were riding with Jordy Lund yeah. at the uh, Bear Mountain. Yeah. Bear Mountain. There you go. Bear Mountain park. Resort. Resort. And, mm -hmm. and they had like a bike. I, I don't know if it still exists. It was a golf club and bike park right. in one. They had some trails. That's great. Great mix. The trails. It's still there for sure. Jordy was building dirt jumps, so they were great. Great. Um, there was an airbag, and we went there, and it was super rainy, and yeah. and and these guys were 
on these like entry level bikes. <laughs> Like jumps that are or bikes that are not meant to be doing like stunts on or even be taking off ramps. Yeah. And these guys were just, oh yeah, and the helmets. And I was just like cringing every time these guys were just sending it off these ramps. Like very little biking experience. And they were doing backflips. Yeah. And they were actually, you guys actually did backflips. You Mm -hmm. did a backflip. Who else did a backflip? I, I mean, by the end of it, we all were pretty much landing wheels ish. <laughs> Riker right. definitely did one for sure. I don't yeah. think anyone really rode off, but like we were all hucking backflips. Did Riker and Alexi do backflips? I think Riker. I can't remember anymore now. Yeah, I, th- I had to see that footage. Yeah, but um, well, yeah, check the video. Our video right. got t- taken well, down. Though. Yeah, we had some. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, some, wait, hold on. Like we, I presented this idea to the group, and I think we should we should collaborate with you. We wanted to do like a Parker parkour. Versus mountain bike mm. video. It sounds so Devin Super Tramp. Yeah. Um, With a giant yeah. inflatable ball that yeah. somebody else is riding in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say let's <laughs> just go. Let's just go mm, mountain biking somewhere. It doesn't even have to be mountain biking. Really, it comes down to is I just love bikes. Let's just go biking. Yeah, you I guys mean, will probably find a way to do a backflip or something. for yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you guys yeah. always do. Yeah. But I would love to take you guys biking. Yeah, show let's us your it. world. Let's and, do it. Uh, yeah, it's a scary world. Is it? I like it a yeah, lot. I've I been like scary. Well, of times. 2019 is going to be the year of the uncomfortable and yeah. scary. All right, how do we plug Mr. Matt Dennison here and all his wonderful how stuff? How can we find your stuff, bro? <laughs> um, you could go to my website at ifht.tv. Ooh. Or you could go onto YouTube and type in ifht, um, and you'll find a lot of videos. I have two channels. Mm-hmm. Um, there's one channel called Matt and Jason, but uh, we're going to be changing the name to Mahalo, my dude. Yeah. Uh, Jason's taking another full time job at Pink Bike, and we're going to turn it into something bigger than that's just bigger than ourselves. We're going to wow. have more people become a part of it, and uh, that's yeah, awesome. Take it to the next level. Incredible. And on Instagram, you have IFHT. IFHT well. Films, that's you right. can find me. Personal is Matt Dennison TV if you want to find him. So Matt Dennison track him down. TV. Yeah. So many handles. You know what? You know what? You, you don't type in. Okay, well, why am I saying this? <laughs> They're going to do it now. If you, if you type in Matt Dennison, to uh, into Google, um, <laughs> you'll find a website, Matt Dennison TV. And that is my old website from probably three, four years ago. But I, I don't own it anymore. So I stopped renewing Matt Dennison TV. Yeah, <laughs> like somebody else three, it. four years ago. Because I just, I didn't find it. I didn't know if I was going to use it anymore. I should have just renewed it. Lesson learned. If you have a, a domain, just keep renewing it for the end, till the end of time. <laughs> um, and someone... Some hacker man took it, took the code, and just has my website up there. But if you go into the bio, it's like Matt Dennison, uh, you know, makes films, a cinematographer, editor, and also ex- uh, specializes in photo retouching. And photo retouching is highlighted in red, and it's a hyperlink. And if, oh, you, no. if you click it, it'll go to some random website. And I, I, and and so I don't have any control of that website. I've tried to get control of it. I've contacted like GoDaddy. I've contacted a whole bunch of people, and I, I don't know what to do. And it actually bothers me a lot because I think people are probably searching up who I am, and they're seeing this crappy website that I made a long time ago. And there's a lot of old videos, and they think, "What he photo retouches? What the heck?" Well, we'll that let, is kind of strange. We will let Ben, our master so if, webmaster, yeah. you know, hack if you have in, any hacker hack men, yeah, we room. got anti hacker man. He'll yeah, hack the hackers that's away. Right. Unfortunately, this is all the time we have for today. Thank goodness. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> so yeah, remember you can follow us on all of our socials on High and Life and you know, leave a comment on you know, what you thought of this podcast and who you might want to see in the future. Any uh, final words here? Thanks for having me. Let's go mountain bike. I want to have Changman here so we can roast Matt for telling that story. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I wasn't the one who brought it up. Oh, that's true. That was pickle. I did, I did take it to another level. Anything <laughs> to say? Thank you for joining us today, Matt. <laughs> Love you, Peck. It's been a nice, Love y'all. A nice podcast. Thanks for having, thanks for having, for having me. Thanks for right. doing this. Thanks Don't for leave me you. hanging on camera. Yeah. Oh, sorry, bro. Here we go. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for keeping the high on life legacy. 20, oh, let's all hold hands. Hold hands. Mine are clammy. 20 hey. time. Uh, 2019, God. here we let's come. With a, oh. mm, let's get our right, comfortable. Peace, love, hate out. Peace, 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 peace. Love, hate out. And we're out. I hope so. <laughs> you know, usually we cut, but actually we finish every <laughs> podcast like this exactly. <laughs> Just this is the first time we filmed it. Oh, yeah. <laughs>